Hi, and welcome to Almost Breaking News here on the Fully Charged Show. Wait, wait a minute, don't show, don't show them that. Get, keep it on me, keep it on, get, get on me. <laughs> ABN. Almost breaking news. <laughs> Avalanche of Boris nonsense. Absolute battery nuance. <laughs> Abandoned burning now. Hmm. Welcome to Almost Breaking News on the Fully Charged Show. Coming up, electric buses in a city, but you won't believe which city. After driving an electric car for just 7,000 miles, owners are amazed at how much cleaner it is. Consumers are shocked about a solar panel factory that runs on 100% renewable energy. These driverless cars are taking the UK streets by storm. And Bitcoin maximalists are about to use all the electricity in the whole world and destroy the planet. <laughs> and if those aren't crass clickbait headlines, then I don't know what is. Here's a little bit of shameless self-promotion. Now, somehow, the powers that be at the Fully Charged Show, <clears throat> that's me, uh, managed to persuade the amazing Fully Charged Show team to crank out twice the amount of episodes in 2021. Don't tell them, will you? In fact, you can find hundreds of high-quality episodes over on our other channel, Fully Charged Plus. Now, that includes our thought-provoking podcast that airs every Monday for your oral pleasure, Oral ears, that means, goodness sake. And we also release regular product showcases like these. Vehicle to grid allows you to take energy out of your car and put it back on the grid. If you've got solar already, it's very much worth having it installed. It is, yeah. How easy, easy is it to put up electric wallpaper? If you're using a lot of electricity in your house, it could be coming from your car as well as going into the grid. The technology is developing very fast. The way Kenza see the future is putting the infrastructure in the ground and then just have a heat pump come online whenever it feels free to tap in. Mixergy tank state of charge is 51%. Ooh. We've also created a fantastic explainer series on electric cars with lease plan. Just search for Electric Moments on Fully Charged Plus to watch them all. There are also episodes where I blow off some steam Helen converts her bike to electric, Jack takes his electric motorbike test, and Dan looks at digital wallpaper. And in 2022, we will be upping the ante, as well as, as all the above and, and more, uh, Andy will be shooting some roundup episodes on vans, trucks, and campers, electric campers, for starters. Meanwhile, after the success of our home series, we will be moving our home energy episodes to Fully Charged Plus, and Dan has a date with some heat pumps that are looking rather gorgeous very soon. In short, we can't fit the Fully Charged Show onto one channel, so don't miss out on the oodles of organic goodness over on Fully Charged Plus. And why don't you subscribe to that too? Twice the positivity. Now, right at the tippy top, quick public transport update. A couple of electric bus stories, one I've mentioned before, but one that really surprised me. Now, we reported last year that the classic yellow American school bus is getting an electric makeover. A company called C Electric, a provider of electric commercial vehicles originally from Australia and now based in Los Angeles, has struck a deal with Midwest transit equipment to convert 10,000 existing uh, school buses to electric drive over the next five years. Now, not only is this, of course, hugely beneficial to the children who ride on the buses and the people who stand near them, when they're currently powered, of course, by dated and filthy diesel motors, but these buses spend the majority of their time work, uh, parked up in the bus depot, where they'll now be linked to vehicle-to-grid systems, making this valuable asset even more valuable. So we know electric vehicles are making big inroads in the USA, in Europe, South Korea, Japan and China, but it's not often we mention Russia on the Fully Charged Show. I mean, Russia, oil, gas, oligarchs, more oil and gas, gas, gas pipelines, and a total reliance on this gas 
in Western Europe. How absolutely wonderful for Mr. Putin. But electric vehicles in Russia? Mm, no, not so much. <laughs> Until I saw this, there are 900 electric buses running around the streets of Moscow. 900? Who knew? Well, clearly a lot of folks who live in Moscow because the electric buses have carried more than 150 million people in their three years of operation. Now, these buses are built by the Kamaz organization. Well, welcome, Mr. Bond, to Kamaz headquarters here in a huge underground concrete bunker like at the end of every f***ing Bond movie you ever made. Can you beep out the f***? <laughs> Moscow is also actively developing its charging infrastructure. Currently, there are more than 150 charging facilities in the city. And by the end of 2023, this number will increase to 500 stations. Electric vehicles in Russia. Now, many of you will have heard people suggest that you have to drive an electric vehicle 350,000 miles in order to compensate for the carbon output that results from making the car in the first place. They modified these ridiculous claims down to 45,000 miles and then to 28,000 miles. But basically, to, in order to even catch up with a petrol or diesel car, you had to drive an electric car for years. Which, which, uh, the whole point of this was to make electric cars look worse than diesel. That was the remit given to the fossil fuel lobbyists. What is now emerging are very convincing numbers from genuine research done by the ICCT, the International Council on Clean Transportation. The examples they give in peer-reviewed documents are that a petrol car the size of a Volkswagen Golf creates around 7.2 tonnes of carbon emissions to manufacture the car. Not run it, just manufacture it, just make it. By comparison, manufacturing a new electric car of similar size results in around 9.2 tonnes of carbon emissions. That carbon debt can be mitigated by a mere 7,061 miles of driving. And with average annual distance driven in Europe of less than 10,000 miles, it takes less than a year for the two cars to be neck and neck. Now, at the end of, the, of year two, as the combustion car continues to burn irreplaceable hydrocarbons with crazed abandon, the electric car is then twice as clean. After 10 years, don't ask. It's just embarrassing. And while we're on the topic of how we produce things and what the energy and carbon cost is, a Chinese company called Risen is building a factory to produce vast amounts of solar panels, but that is powered by 100% renewable energy. The solar manufacturing complex in Inner Mongolia will produce materials across the solar supply chain, from industrial silicon to PV modules. More than half of the planned investment will be used to develop on-site power facilities for the factory, including 5.1 gigawatts of renewables, coupled with energy storage. And here's the critical point of why this news story is, I feel, so important. Yes, I'm sure the company are doing this as a kind of you know, benign greenwashing campaign. Oh, our factory is 100% renewable. But their primary motivation is because the energy supply is cheaper and more reliable. They're not going to suddenly be going to be hit by massive increases in power costs because of global market fluctuations in the cost of oil, gas and coal. And the cost of solar, wind and storage is now cheaper than any other form of energy generation. Okay, well, what about self-driving cars, I hear you shouting? We've been promised them for a long time. Where the hell are they? Well, thankfully, I'm joined by our motoring correspondent, Jack Scarlett. So, Jack. Hello. Driverless cars. Really right. exciting. This is an amazing yeah, thing. Yeah, you sounded very excited I'm on the phone about this. Really so excited about this. Pitch. Okay, so it's, it's Milton Keynes. Great. Which, are, you know, we've seen a lot of experiments with, uh, with or, or transport Some in Milton Keynes. Some say it's the Silicon Valley of South of England. <laughs> yeah. It is the centre of Formula One engineering, if you think it, of it all around there. That is actually true. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, driverless cars, so it's, called, it's a new uh, uh, app and a new organisation called Fetch, mm -hmm. and you have your Fetch app, right. you're standing on the street in Milton Keynes, you need to get to the other side of town, you haven't got a car, what are you going to do? You've pressed your Fetch app, the car drives up to you, you get in, you can open it with your Fetch app, you get in, you drive it to where you're going, you get out, it drives off. The car drives up to you? Drives up to you, on its driverless. Own. 
it's, it's, there's a couple of steps. Okay, because it's still early days. And is it's, the car driving itself? The car is driving. <laughs> the car, theoretically, is driving itself because there's someone in a remote location <laughs> with a steering wheel and lots of screens and they're driving like that. So okay. it's being so driven. someone's playing the, kind of the world's most boring sim video Imagine game in a, in a basement quite somewhere. a dull job. Right. And then also, right at the beginning, when they first launch it, there has to be, for legal reasons, a safety driver in the oh. car. I can't work out this car. <laughs> so okay. what you do is you order the car, it drives up to you, right. there's someone in it, not driving, and they get out and then you get in and then you drive it. Yeah. So the point is, okay, this is the argument is, from an insurance perspective, it's a really quick solution to the conundrums around how you insure autonomous cars. Yes. Because if you're in a car, and is it your responsibility? If, say you're in a, a very modern autonomous car with no controls, mm -hmm. and, and there is a, an incident Who's a in crash. Charge, yeah. Who's in charge? Is it your fault? Is it the, and this one removes that. So when the car has no one in it, yeah. it doesn't have to cater for the, a passenger. So therefore it can destroy itself in a difficult situation if they, it's got a choice between yeah. knocking over a child or smashing into a lamppost, it smashes into a lamppost. I think it's very, very glass half full of you. <laughs> I, I'm being brutally honest, if I summoned a driverless car yeah. and it arrived and some bloke was in it, my disappointment would some, be immeasurable. And a really depressed bloke who just has to sit right. there all day being driven drive, right now. Can we just like, dress him up as one of the seats? You, you sort of yes. up, upholster him and it, I don't want to know that he's there. But I'm, what I'm hoping is that we can go and film this later this year when the weather's nice. So when they when they don't have to have the driver in, because yeah. then it's quite a cool thing. Absolutely. Car drives up, no one in. Because I like the, the the theory of it. I I want to drive myself to where I'm going. You know, I don't want to have to work it out. I just go. I'm going there. But what would be brilliant is you get out of a car when you've done that, and it just goes away. That is an appealing. And you don't thought. have to park and, and it or charge to it. To then go and be used by someone else yeah. instead of sitting yeah, dormant yeah. for 23 hours. What I'm wondering is, can I pay a bit extra if I've been to the pub to have the person in the in the studio do the driving for me when I'm in it yeah, as well? Yeah, see, that's the thing. That's when the insurance gets difficult, because then oh, are I you see, responsible? I see, I see. Yeah, that could be okay. the next step. It sounds intriguing. We'll have to go check it out. Fully Charged Live is back and bigger than ever. Get your tickets now to the world's number one electric vehicle and clean energy live show. Featuring all manner of electric vehicles, tons of test drives, live theater sessions, interactive home energy experiences, and so much more. See you there. And finally, here's a use for all the renewable energy we can ever make and more. I mean, throw in some nuclear, coal, gas and oil while you're at it. Oh yeah, baby, we are talking Bitcoin and server farms the size of Detroit. Now listen to this, during 2021, Bitcoin consumed 134 terawatt hours in total, which is comparable to the electrical energy consumed by a country like Argentina. So not on a little island somewhere, Argentina. Related CO2 emissions were 64 megatons, megatons, enough to negate the entire global net savings from all the EVs that are currently on the road. In 2021, the Bitcoin network handled 97 million transactions. That's a lot, isn't it? Uh, that, this equals roughly 0.012% of the worldwide volume of non-cash transactions. Not much. Bitcoin was responsible for 0.54% of global electricity consumption. On average, that's 1,386 kilowatt hours per Bitcoin transaction. That is nothing short of clinically insane. Now, the power consumed by one Bitcoin transaction could power an average US household for more than 1.5 months. The carbon footprint of just one Bitcoin transaction amounts to 658 kilograms of CO2, which is equal to the carbon footprint of almost 1.5 million traditional banking, computerized banking transactions, let's say visa transactions. It's also a bigger carbon footprint than the per passenger carbon footprint of a direct flight from Amsterdam to New York. And of course, cryptocurrencies are being used more and more. And the Bitcoin network consumed 89% more energy in 2021 than it did in 2020, which shows that it's growing. Now, these figures come from the Digiconomist site and links 
uh, are in the description below. And some of you may be asking, how can cryptocurrencies possibly use that much electricity? Good question. I mean, the Bitcoin app on your phone uses virtually nothing. But then there is the router it's communicating through and then the massive server farms all over the world and the secure networking infrastructure joining all those farms together. Uh, they all use electricity. And because cryptocurrencies are so calculation intensive, they use more than any other form of transaction. And the really important thing to remember is the number of transactions using this technology uh, is minute in comparison to all the transactions taking place using more traditional banking methods. And yes, I do know that there are newly emerging technologies that will reduce the energy use and blockchain technology goes way beyond just cryptocurrencies. It's, it's, it's just that it, a huge amount of the energy use caused by activities is very remote, if not completely hidden. Take this video you're watching now. As I said, Bitcoin consumed 134 terawatt hours in 2021. YouTube consumed 600 terawatt hours a year, which is 2.5% of global energy use. So it's quite a chunk. So I feel really, really guilty using all that power to distribute this episode. So that's it. I haven't told the rest of the crew this. Time's up. That's it. It's the end of Fully Charged. We'll never do it again. See you all soon. And if, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Well, if you enjoyed that episode, you're going to love this one. And this one, too, is very relevant to the topic. And also, if you want to subscribe to Fully Charged, which is a wonderful thing to do, really helps us, costs you nothing, you just click up there. It's really simple. And if you do want to support us a little bit more, you can have a look at the Patreon link. That's up there. Thank you.